The last statement I really want to make about conservative versus non-conservative forces is that um, non-conservative forces take useful mechanical energy and convert it into heat. So we can make a strict statement that says that, and it would look like this. The work done by non-conservative forces changes the mechanical energy of the system. And therefore, we can no longer use EI is EF, or last year, me I is me F. We can't use these guys when that's the case because the energy is not constant. Whoa! I meant to say me F. Okay, so mechanical energy is being lost to heat when a non conservative force does work. Let's see if this makes sense. If it does positive work, if friction does positive work, then the energy will increase. Does that make any sense? Let's see. What kind of work is friction doing as I push the pen across the paper? As I push the pen across the paper, sketch the pen for you. The pen's like, uh, like that. And I'm applying a force that direction. And friction's applying a force the other way. And the pen is going that direction. So friction is doing negative work in that case. And in fact, a non-conservative force is very often doing negative work. So as friction does negative work, the change in mechanical energy will be negative. That just means the system is losing useful mechanical energy when friction does negative work. So this statement is Awesome. Let me put the other statements on here as well. We also had the statement that a conservative force, when it does work, the system loses potential energy. It may be that it's converting it to kinetic, or it may be that it's then losing that uh, potential energy into heat. But we know that whenever a conservative force does work, we are losing potential energy. And also, we know that total work is equal to change in kinetic energy. So these three equations, let's put them on equal footing. They're all very nice. And let's have a flower pot. Very good.